Hi everyone, this is Andrew. Today I'll be talking about Channel 7's toxic culture. So for those of you who don't know, Channel 7 is owned by the Seven West Media Group. They're one of the largest media empires in Australia. So not only do they own uh, Network 7, they also own some radio licenses, newspapers, magazines, and they've also got an online presence. They own 50% of Yahoo 7, I believe. The other 50% is owned by Yahoo. So what's been happening with Channel 7 recently? A lot, and a lot of bad stuff. So let's first talk about the Amy Torba dismissal. So who is Amy Torba? Well, she's a 27-year-old former Seven Network cadet journalist uh, based out of Adelaide, and she lost her job. And why did she lose her job? Well, she made a complaint about an older male reporter who had allegedly commented on her appearance, made disparaging remarks about her marital status, and called her a lesbian. Yes, not very nice, and I believe she was in her right to complain about such um, behaviour. How did Seven react to this? Well, days later, she found out she was being investigated for a satirical MEMS page run by her sister Kate. Now Kate herself has said that she does run this page, but that Amy has nothing to do with it. So it's interesting that Channel 7 are basically trying to dig up dirt on Amy, aren't they? So what happened next? She was called into her news director's office and presented with allegations of bullying against one of her friends, who had never made a complaint about Amy. Now this colleague of hers, who is still her friend today, apparently never made these allegations. So how is it that Channel 7 came across allegations of bullying against him when he didn't even make the allegations? Obviously, it was completely fabricated. She was denied a support person in the meeting, which breaches workplace laws. Uh, you can hear all of this in, on the recording. I'll post a link to the recording in the description. Uh, you can hear the support person was with her when she went to the meeting, but was told by the HR representative that she was not allowed to be there for this meeting, and if she had a problem with it, she could talk to her later. So yes, she promptly left. Uh, to protect her legal rights, she recorded the meeting with her phone. So very smart of Amy, she uh, put her phone on the table and hit the record button. Good that she did, because this is why this news is being talked about today. This recording is available online, and it shows you the toxic environment in Channel 7. So Amy requested the statement of the person who made the allegations, but was refused and told to put it in writing. At first, the uh, HR representative didn't even uh, give her a reply. It was only because Amy pushed her a little bit, she pressured her a little bit, that she responded with, oh, please put it in writing. Basically, she did not want to give her any information about the statement, the alleged statement, which probably doesn't even exist, I assume. And if it, did, if it does exist, it's probably made up. So Amy was asked to leave immediately after the meeting, that is, leave the company. Uh, she was relieved of her phone and ID pass. Uh, the HR representative gave a reason for needing her phone, something to do with IT. They needed to get the ID, IT de department to get in there and remove things or whatever. It was basically a way to stop uh, Amy leaving with any dirt on Channel 7. So she was escorted to her desk and told not to touch the IT. Even though she said she was still logged into her Facebook that she wanted to log out of, they told her, no, you're not allowed to touch any of the IT. And that was it, basically. It all happened very quickly. There was no prior warning to any of this. It just all happened. At one moment she was asked to go into the office and have a meeting with HR, and then a few minutes later, she was being escorted out of Channel 7. So, this is a bit of a rhetorical question. Is Channel 7 a dictatorship? I would suggest that it is. They treat their employees unfairly. If their employees have any uh, complaint about Channel 7, they're quick to censor them. And if they pursue it, well, we can see what happened with Amy Torba. She got dismissed. Well, wrongfully dismissed, really. Would she want to go back? I doubt it. I doubt she'd want to go back to them knowing how they treat people now. 
Okay, a bit of a history lesson. A few years ago, um, there was this lady named Amber Harrison. She's still in the news today because uh, recently her court case was resolved. So who is she? She's the former executive assistant of Seven Network between 2013 and 2014, and she had an affair with Seven CEO Tim Warner. So she disclosed her affair to the public after having some internal conflict with, uh, with Seven. And it was something over company credit cards. I believe she might have been using credit cards when she shouldn't have been, or at least that's the allegation. But that wasn't why she had to go to court. Her legal battle was for breaching a confidentiality agreement, and it went on for about three years. She's been ordered to pay for Seven's legal costs. And what did she have to say about all this? She stated, Too often, our legal system and courts are used by one party to exhaust the other when one can't afford the fight. And I pretty much I pretty I pretty much agree with that. Channel seven used their muscle, used their legal might to uh, basically force her into bankruptcy. There's probably no way she could come out of this without being bankrupt. Obviously the higher ups at seven didn't take too kindly that Amber had disclosed her affair with Tim Warner. So they took her to court, and this has been going on for the last three years. Yeah, sure they won. But at what cost? They've completely damaged their reputation. Amber Harrison is not innocent. She's pretty guilty too, I guess. But um, Tim Warner, really, he shouldn't be going around having affairs with his staff. That's not very becoming of a CEO. Finally, let's talk about Seven West Media's fall. So I grabbed this chart from uh, the internet this morning. Uh, it shows you the decline, the steady decline of the share price of Seven West Media from about 2013 onwards. Not going too well for them. Last financial year, 2016-2017, they reported a full year loss of $744 million. CEO Tim Warner has indicated difficult times ahead in traditional free-to-air television. So yes, uh, I think that's fairly obvious that free-to-air TV just can't survive very well nowadays. They rely entirely on advertising revenue. And now that there's advertising available online, which is much, much cheaper, obviously companies don't want to pay top dollar for airing their ads on television anymore. So most of their revenue has dried up for these on, for these uh, TV networks. There's also been a big slump in readership of the company's newspapers. Again, thanks to the online market, anybody can go online now and read their news for free. Who's going to go out and buy a newspaper? Obviously, there's still some market in the older audience, like my my dad probably enjoys reading the newspaper, but pe for people my age or younger, <laughs> it's just not a thing anymore. Occasionally, I read a newspaper, but only when I'm really bored and I'm waiting at a cafe where there's some newspapers on a on a rack somewhere, but I'm not paying for it, that's for sure. Uh, I've kind of said this before, but yes, there's been significant falls in advertising revenue. People don't want to pay for TV adverts anymore. I've used advertising online and it's very, very cheap. Doesn't mean it's very effective, but if you want to get lots of eyes on your ads, then yes, uh, internet's the way to go. Here's a quote I grabbed from an article about uh, Seven West's profits. Uh, revised market growth assumptions that are impacting the carrying value of its television, newspaper and magazine businesses. That's basically just business talk to say that things aren't going their way anymore. So here are some of the issues. Cheap online advertising, free news, a tech-savvy population. If you don't have online content, then you're going to fail. You can't rely on the traditional media anymore. Free-to-air television, radio to some extent, newspapers. It's all old, old hat, isn't it? And finally, a bit of a rhetorical question on my part. Has their culture been their downfall? I would say yes. It started when Tim Warner decided to go out and have an affair with one of his staffers. And look where it's ending. The company's culture defines the company. Your company is only made up of people. And if there's a toxic culture within your company, then ultimately your company is going to fail. You treat your workers right. And if you don't, Things are going to go south for you. Seven West Media have learnt the hard way. 
Thank you for listening. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!